Hi everyone, today our group would like to present about crystallization, particularly in food, for our course assignment. But first of all, let me introduce our group members. I'm Magdalene, this is Nora Mila, and this is Lina, and this is Nora Aliana. So let's get back to what we want to present today. Let's go to the basic question. What is crystallization? Crystallization is basically a term that describes several different phenomena that is related to the formation of a crystalline lattice structure, which also can be explained as a phase transition of a liquid or a solution or gas to a crystal. As you can see in this schematic diagram, the molecules fall from the liquid layer into the adsorbed layer and then to form an orderly arranged crystal lattice. This principle of the phenomena will then be presented by Lina. Hi, I'm Lina. I'm going to talk about principle of crystallization. Basically, there are four important steps in crystallization. Typically, include solubility and supersaturation. Okay, the first one is. The solubility means the maximum weight of an hydrous solid that will dissolve in 100 gram of solvent, mostly is water. Solubility is a function of temperature. Most food materials increase in temperature, hence increases the solubility of the solid as shown for sucrose in figure 1.0. Pressure has very little effect on solubility. Okay. shows the solubility, super solubility curve showing equilibrium solubility, supersaturations, and metastable limit. An undersaturated solution can be induced to crystallize by solvent evaporation, temperature change, or both. A supersaturated solution contains more dissolved material than it should, according to the compound solubility. Supersaturation is defined scientifically as concentrations of the solute exceeds its equilibrium solubility. Supersaturations of solution can be expressed into two, which the first one is difference between the concentration of saturated solution and the equilibrium solubility, while the second one is ratio between the two S. Next is nucleation. The types of nucleations include two, which are primary nucleations, while this primary nucleation refers to the formation of crystal nuclei from a solution that contain no persisting crystals. It occurs through both homogeneous and heterogeneous mechanisms. Meanwhile, the secondary nucleation refers to the initiations by contact with foreign particles and surface. The presence of foreign particles provides nucleating sites, subsequently induce nuclear formation at much lower supersaturations or circling than those required for homogeneous nucleation. Okay. The factors that will get to affect these nucleations are supersaturations, temperature, viscosity, cooling rate, agitation rate, additives, and impurities. Next, the growth. Once nuclei are formed, the crystals will continue to grow so long as supersaturation persists. These supersaturations at low level will cause the nucleus formation is not encouraged, but the availability nuclei will continue to grow and large crystals will result. Supersaturations at high level shows the growth of existing crystal will not be so great. Meanwhile, the slow cooling produces large crystals and fast cooling produces small crystals. Lastly, recrystallization. This recrystallization result, the uh, recrystallization is usually a product that starts out initially with a high quality and ends up with undesired characteristic. It occurs during packaging, storing, and distribution. <coughs> The factors affecting recrystallization are heat and mass transfer rates, products formulation, and post-processing effect.
Thanks, Lena, for the explanation. Okay, so why do we go through all this explanation? I mean about crystallization. It is because it's important in food as it affects the texture, appearance, and shelf life of food. In texture, um, small crystals uh, can contribute to a smooth, creamy texture, but sometimes may cause a short texture in certain candies. While large crystals contribute to a rough, hard, or grainy texture. As for appearance, crystal can cause the uh, appearance of some food to appear glossy or frosty. Um, frosty as in in your cereal, the frost that you can see on it, which appeals to consumer. So it's very important that uh, crystallization is studied. Next, uh, it also can extend the shelf life. It, because um, as in ice cream, when water is crystallized, um, the water will not be available to bacteria, so it will inhibit the bacteria growth, thus extending the shelf life. On another, on another context, it also can prevent um, blooming, you know, that um, distorts the taste, the texture, and reducing its shelf life. So next, it will be on appearance. Sorry, I mean application. Hi, I'm Yana. Now, I'm, uh, I would like to talk about the application of crystallization in food product. Ice cream. Okay. Ice cream has a wanted and unwanted crystallization properties. Wanted properties. Formation of an eye crystal provides a smooth texture of ice cream. But how to control the small ice crystal? So uh, there are few steps to control this size. First, by rapid crystallization, lowering the temperature during processing and stabilizer. Um, for the rapid crystallization and lowering the temperature, ice cream is cool as quickly as possible down to the temperature less than negative 25 degrees Celsius. The temperature and times of cooling will depend on the type of storage freezer. Rapid cooling will promote quick freezing of water and create small eye crystal. Storage at negative 25 degrees Celsius will help to stabilize the ice crystal and maintain product quality. Addition of stabilizer also will create a small ice crystal and prevent the growth of sorry <laughs> now I would like to uh, I would like to invite Amila to give her about the unwanted crystallization hi I'm Amila now uh, I will explain about the unwanted crystallization in ice cream um, okay Although crystallization is desirable in ice cream, but they, there is also undesirable crystalli crystallization uh, called lactose crystallization. In lactose crystal crystallization, uh, it is occurred during the long storage of the ice cream. During storage, the unfrozen phase that is super saturated in lactose tend to form crystals. Thus, it will result in undesirable gritty and sandiness texture in ice cream. We do not want this sandiness texture in ice cream. So, what we need to do? Of course, we need to control this lactose crystal formation. There are a few steps to control it, um, which is by seeding method and by using stabilizer. Uh, in seeding method, a small quantity of lactose seed, such as a dry whey powder, is added to the mix. It contains large quantities of minute microns that develop such small crystal in the ice cream, so it will not detectable in milk. And second is using stabilizer. Use of edible marine such as carrageenan and vegetable gums such as locust bean gum can maintain the desirable texture in ice cream, which can reduce the lactose crystal formation in ice cream. Okay, um, besides ice cream, there are also other examples of wanted and unwanted crystallization in other pro food products. These are some of the examples of wanted crystallization. 
What we have here is fondant, chocolate, margarine and peanut butter. Lastly, for the unwanted crystallization of uh, the food product, we have here is honey, cheese, hard candy and milk powder. That's all uh, for our presentation. Thank you for viewing. Oh.